Um, I, I, I'm trying to keep the videos short so that uh, it's not too taxing. You know, I normally my, my the videos should be five minutes or less, but sometimes I do get carried away because there's just so much to, so much to explain. Now, the, I, I ended the previous video with the question: Okay, what kind of vectors do you use for cloning? If you've done cloning in recombinant DNA technology class, you will you would have uh, experience cloning maybe a, a fragment of about 2,000 or 3,000 so you can do that. A, a plasmid, the size of a plasmid is about three to 4,000 and on top of that you can actually clone in that means you can actually fuse that plasmid with another piece of DNA which is about two, three thousand, 3,000 maybe 4,000 and so on yeah. Um, if it gets too big then you know it's not easy to put it inside a cell uh, and then the cell may not be viable. So there are limitations in using the usual plasmid. So um, again, part of the Human Genome Project is also to develop new ways to clone. And um, what they do is they, they use artificial chromosomes. And uh, there is a part, there's an article that called that that's entitled Yaks, Bats, Packs, and Max. What are what are Yaks, Bats, Packs, and Max? Yaks is yeast artificial chromosomes. Bax is bacterial artificial chromosomes, PACT is P1 or phage artificial chromosome, and MAC, mammalian artificial chromosomes. I'll tell you about MAC. Mammalian artificial chromosomes, I think they use uh, mouse chromosome. They don't they don't keep the whole chromosome, but they do they, they uh, you know you know chromosomes, there are certain uh, regions that are essential, for example, the centromere, the telomere, these are essential to ensure that this chromosome can be uh, can be maintained in the cell culture and then once you have that artificial chromosome then you clone, clone in your fragment inside uh, but uh, Max are not very easy to use again and P1, P, P, Fudge, packs are also not very popular because while it can be good it can only take about 40 to 50 kilobases which is you're talking about a chromosome which is about 300 million bases right so, so if you have uh, clones that can only take fifty thousand, you know, you're gonna need a lot of clones. Um, Yax. So I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm going through uh, the sequence not in in order that I've written because you know I want to eliminate Max and Pack first, and then people started off using Yax. Yax are yeast artificial. You know. You know yeast uh, Saccharomyces uh, cerevisiae. Uh, they use yeast chromosomes and they modify the chromosomes throw out some of the uh, yeast genes and then use it to make an artificial chromosome so that they can clone in sequences it's fine it can take up to maybe about two million bases a fragment of two million base can easily be cloned into a yeast artificial chromosomes unfortunately they are not stable by me, my by by not stable. It means that you know when you start off cloning uh, two million bases, but you know after the cell is allowed to divide and so on, you'll find that uh, some of the your colony now your clones have become shorter. You know it's, it's sort of because the DNA is too long. It then you know maybe I don't know recombination or some deletion and so on. So the the inserts are not stable. So so the best system that. Uh, in the end, was the bags. Bags are bacterial artificial chromosomes. You use the bacterial chromosomes. You check out all the G unnecessary necessary for cloning, and then uh, you can put in the fragment of interest. And each bag can take about two hundred thousand uh, length, uh, two hundred thousand base bases for cloning. All right. They are uh, not as big as yaks, but uh, but more. The most important thing is that it is stable, right? So in the end, yaks uh, bats were used were the clones of choice, uh, vectors of choice for um, creating contexts. Um, so this is the. The box 7.1 shows you how they do uh, yeast artificial chromosome. This is the yeast chromosome. Um, you know they um, cut with um, with with uh, uh, enzymes and then they leave out the, the telomere, the uh, centromere. You know only the important regions and then 
you've got the short arm and the long arm and then you know you can have inserts DNAs and this one becomes a complete chromosome that can be maintained in the cell okay um, okay now that now that um, everything is cloned all right now jumped you know to a few years or a few few um, steps uh, in the human genome mapping processes now that uh, you have uh, each chromosome has been isolated and now they have been broken into overlapping segments and all these segments are maintained in clones, clone contigs. So then the next step will be to sequence. So having done all that, then this is the race. The race of getting the, to achieve the draft human genome sequence. Now, from 80s, 90s, it's always been a public funded um, project, the human genome project that is um, uh, funded by, uh, it, is, it was established in, in different labs. But uh, sometime in the year, um, this is the um, this is sort of uh, the um, uh, chronology of events. Uh, where is it? What I wanted to mention was that um, there was a private company that um, at that time says, you know, Craig Benter um, in a company called Solera, uh, they said, you know, we can sequence, because the, the public funded uh, project takes about 15 years, you know, from 1990 to about 2000, 1990, 1999, 2000 to 2005. That was a target. Uh, so I think this is within the year 2000, 1990, late 1990s. This company called Solera said, you know, you know, we can sequence. Well, they they can sequence in in three years. You know, that's what they said. And uh, the thing is. The public funded uh, sequence was always made available freely for everybody. Um, so I think so. In the end, uh, I think they settled for a joint announcement in two thousand. They, they they first announced in two thousand one as a first draft, and then again in two thousand three uh, on the completion of the human genome. When they say complete, that means uh, there are still regions that cannot be sequenced. For example, the repetitive sequence, the centromeres and the telomeres, and and um, and whatnot. Right? And you'll see here it says that the heterochromatic region cannot be easily sequenced, and um, and because heterochromatic regions are also regions that is that doesn't have a lot of genes, so you know it, it becomes less important um, to get cloned. Uh, this bottom section here talks about the International Human Genome Sequencing Consortium against uh, Celera, the private company, and and the, the and the, the uh, competition. Okay.